After a quality sleep and carb-filled breakfast at Lingy Hut Bothy, it was time to sign the Bothy book and head out to enjoy the fine moorland views. Um, yeah, I'd have to wait a bit <laughs> to enjoy them. But thankfully, I did make it below the clouds eventually, and so the views started to open up. behind. Not bad, eh? Right, next stop, Skidor House. I can see it just ahead. Yeah, I'd read about the place, but in person, it was strange seeing this youth hostel in such a remote spot. I did make it, and this photo gives some information about the place. Feel free to pause the video and have a read, if you fancy it. I didn't do much filming, if I'm honest, uh, once inside, due to there being quite a few other visitors about, but I did take some photos. This one here, this is a scullery, as it was called. I tell you, that's a word you don't see very much these days, isn't it? Those snowy pictures on the wall were epic too. Proper northern snow. This one is the main sitting room and kitchen area. And yep, you can see there a wood-burning stove and even a simple calf with an honesty box. It sure would make a cracking place to stay. Yeah, and I hope to go back at some point. Soon, I left the comfort of Skidor House behind and found myself playing cad about filled my bottle at this waterfall and enjoyed some incredible views south into the rest of the Lake District before the sign was reached and the man versus mountain battle commenced. Oh, those shots. That was classic Lake District scenery, wasn't it? Absolutely beautiful, but I'm heading up into the wild stuff again. Yeah, dropped down, got to the end of the valley, and yeah, you just saw I'm now on the lower slopes of Blencathra. Started at about 270 metres above sea level, and I've got to get up to 800 plus. And yeah, we've just gone 20 past two, so I'm hoping I'll be up there within the hour. We'll see how we do. Either way, I've got just under four hours of daylight left, and there's still a fair bit of walking to do. Finally made it to the summit, 868 metres, and it's taken me just over an hour and 20 minutes. So pretty good going, I reckon. It's just a shame about the visibility. They look absolutely bugged. <laughs> just annoying. It seems to be the story of this trip so far. Any high point, and yeah, just get stuck in the flag. See what's weird as well. It's a bit of a weird trick point, isn't there? You expect to have something you can put your hands on, and you sort of head up this high. But hey, I'm not going to moan about it. It's just good to finally get it done. A number of times I've driven past this mountain and looked up and said, one day I will conquer your summit. And today we've finally done it. But I reckon now, I'm not going to stick around, it's getting cold. And I need to find my way off the summit, which is going to be no easy feat. You've got visibility, visibility even, like that. Let's push on. Yeah, you guessed it. You know, I hadn't come far down from the summit. And then, of course, the clouds started to rise and the visibility opened up. Really annoying because it'd only been sort of 10, 15 minutes or so since I've been at the summit and I couldn't see anything. But the views looking towards sort of Sharp Edge and sort of the Blencathra summit and all of the fells to the north as well. Yeah, they were amazing. So just sit back and just enjoy these views.
Oh, another pile of bricks marks another summit. I tell you what, getting up and over Bow Scale Fell was hard work with all the miles I put in. But the reward of Bow Scale Tarn was just amazing. I mean, check out that view. Yeah, breathtaking and a cracking into the walk. And I tell you, actually getting down next to the tarn itself was amazing as well. And yeah, I was really excited at the prospect of wild camping here. And that little bit of grass was just perfect for it. But typically, me being me, yeah, I've forgotten some important stuff, which you'll find out about in the next little, the last bit of the video. So yeah, I'll have to come back for another trip. So no, you're not going mad. You're not imagining things. We've gone from me standing next to that amazing tarn to being on top of a, well, I say a mountain, it's just a very large hill. Let me explain why. Yeah, basically, long story short, it was a massive cock up on my behalf. I unpacked the tent. It, was, it would have been a brilliant place to, uh, to camp. And then I realised that I just completely ran out of food. I thought I'd packed dinners for two nights. No, it'd only been the one. So yeah, I knew after 30 miles of walking that I was going to need, like to, I was going to be a bottomless pit and it was just going to be a really uncomfortable night. So uh, yeah, I bailed, checked into a really, really budget sort of B&B. And then this morning I've come up to um, Binzi Fell, which is where I am now. 447 metres. Despite the fact that it's not overly high, it is still considered a Wainwright. And I believe it is probably the most northerly Wainwright in the lakes. And what makes it, is, yeah, what it lacks in height, actually, it makes up for in views. Because it's kind of a summit that stands alone on its own. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll finish the video by showing you the amazing 360. And, uh, yeah, I'll just say a big thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And I've shown how amazing these northern fells in the lakes are. Little visited, but well worth it. Right, let's do this.